months of winter, the Arctic, the land at the top of the world, lies fiercely cold. Here, trees can never grow. The sea and the land freeze deeply. This is the world of the Eskimo. Of Anakudluk, the hunter. Avinga, his wife. Little Nauya, his daughter. And Mosesi, their son. For days in winter, the sun will never rise. On days in summer, it will never set. With the coming of spring, the sea ice breaks and drifts away from the islands. This is the time of the year when the Eskimos move from their winter camps to spring hunting grounds. Anna Kudluk and his family load all of their belongings on the sled, called a Kramatik for the journey to distant bays in the east where they hope there will be better hunting. Sometimes they travel with relatives or a few other families. But never in large groups, for there is seldom enough food for many miles. Seal provides nourishment for the family and the dogs who will pull the heavy loads. Part wolf, part dog. Strong, vicious. These are no pets. But without them, the Eskimo could not manage, for there is no other way to travel. Mosesi's puppy is too young to run with the rest of the dogs, so he rides on the sled. The journey begins. It is difficult to bring the sleds through the high ridges of ice which push up from the sea near the shore. Once on the smooth ice of the bay, it is easier running. Sea ice can be treacherous this time of the year. Anna Kudluk tests it with his harpoon, for he must know that it is solid and safe and will not break under the load of the sleds. The dogs must rest along the way. And when the family is hungry, a stop is made to eat. An oil stove is used to melt the snow, which Anna Kudluk cuts to make tea. Nearly everyone drinks tea in the Arctic. It helps keep one warm, they say. For the children, a stop along the way means a chance to play. All 
too soon, the chromatics are underway again. The hissing of the runners on the ice. The barking of the dogs. The sting of a freezing wind. There are many miles ahead. So it goes. Until at last, a campsite is chosen. The sleds are unloaded, and it feels good to be on bare, dry land again. Good now to be able to sleep and eat without the cold of the ice and snow beneath you. The snow has begun to melt from the barren ground called tundra, and though frozen deep down, the land thaws on top. In the spring and summer, most Eskimos live in canvas tents, which they buy at the trading posts. These are the summer igloos. Igloo is an Eskimo word meaning home. Spring is a happy time in the Arctic. The children can play ball during the long days of warmer weather. Already the Arctic berry, the pond rain, is out. It is a welcome change from seal, which is the main food of the Eskimo. Seal meat is eaten raw. The word Eskimo comes from an Indian language. It means eater of raw meat. Besides seal, the Eskimos eat bannock, which is a kind of hard bread cooked over the oil stove. Tea sometimes substitutes for soap and water. After the evening meal, families gather together on the warm caribou skins in the tent and enjoy stories of great hunts and great hunters. They make jokes about one another and laugh. There is little else to do. Anna could look worries, too, about many things. The weather. Will it stay fine? Net check the seal. Will he show himself through the ice? There is little meat left. But it is now time to rest. For tonight, it is good to be warm. Tomorrow, there will be work for all. Seal skin will be cut to make new boots, and Avinga will gossip much, too, with her friend Nuna. It is Moses's job to feed the dogs. Food is scarce, and they fight over every piece. Lessons to be learned, too. Mosesi must know how to use and care for a rifle. An Eskimo boy must become a good hunter or he cannot live. The heavy parkas made from caribou skins will protect them from the cold of the sea ice during the many days of hunting which lie ahead. The fur of the inner parka is turned toward the body and the other to the outside. This provides the greatest warmth, for even though spring has come, it can still be very cold in the Arctic as they search for food. There will be many hours crouching silently behind the white blind, 
waiting for nervous Netchek the seal to come up through holes in the ice to drowse and sun himself on the floors. Anna Kudluk has seen Netchek. Should the seal wake, the hunter can hide behind the blind and not be seen. Silently, he moves closer for a better shot. Mosesi is learning the ways of a good hunter. But there are other things to learn, too. There are fish to be had for those who know how to get them. A hole is chopped in the ice, and the fish is speared as it swims by. Sometimes jigging is better. A strip of bright cloth is tied to the hook and then jiggled to attract the fish. Anna Kudluk sets several traps to catch Tyrogeniac, the white fox, whose fur he will trade. The bait is placed near the trap and covered with snow. More snow is cut to cover the trap. It is shaved down to a very thin layer and when Tyrogeniac, the fox, smells the seal meat and comes looking for it, he will step in the trap, and Anna Kudluk will have a fine fur which white men want. Not far from the spring camping grounds is the familiar red and white Hudson Bay post to which the family comes to trade. These visits to the post are the best times of the year. The trader is an old friend and speaks the Eskimo language. These are fine pelts, Anna Kudluk. They'll bring you a good price. There are many things which Anna Kudluk can get in trade for his furs. A new rifle would be good. Ammunition is always necessary. More and more, the Eskimo depends upon goods which white men provide. Things that Avinga's mother probably never knew existed. Things that can help make life easier and more comfortable. Mosesi needs a new parka. It is difficult now to find caribou to make good ones. Most Eskimos now buy their parkas. Anna Kudluk buys fuel for his stove and thinks maybe a mirror would be a good present for Avinga. There are many things Avinga would like, things new to her, like a baby's crib. It would be hard to carry on the sled, but many Eskimos now have these things. For the Arctic is no longer isolated and shut off from the outside world as it once was. Anna Kudluk sometimes visits relatives who live in a real town. Eskimos who live in regular houses have regular jobs, washing machines, and even refrigerators. White men are coming to the Arctic now in ever-increasing numbers, building airstrips, taking mineral wealth from the frozen ground, manning radar and air defense bases, which stretch across the north. There are jobs for Eskimos, who learn very quickly about such things as repairing engines and building houses. Anna Kudluk's brother works as a carpenter, and his children go to a modern school. Here they learn about the outside world, which the Eskimo knew so little of 
until only a few years ago. There are few Eskimos in the whole Arctic now who do not have some contact with the white man. They are adopting his dress, speech, and ways rapidly. The airplane has brought the outside world to the Arctic. And the white men who have come are doing much to change the way Anna Kudluk and his people have always lived. Each spring brings more change. And as he sees these new things around him, Anna Kudluk is glad. For to the Eskimo, it means that the frozen and once lonely Arctic is becoming an easier and better place in which to live. Thank you.